one play. And you know anyone can make one play at any level of the game. Someone on a sandlot somewhere outside Santo Domingo ranged 15, 20 feet beyond the third base coach's box and flung a baseball across their body all the way across the diamond to nail a guy at first base. It can happen to anyone, anywhere. So that's not what made Kibrian Hayes play yesterday in St. Louis special. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Penguins right where you heard this. I'm in Denver to cover the Pirates' three-game series against the Rockies. Pirates arrive here a mile high in both the literal and the figurative sense. They've won six of their last nine since the 10-game losing streak. They just took three out of four in, of all places, Bush Stadium, which never happens. And they're coming off a special outcome yesterday in that Max Kranich was called up for what was supposed to be a spot start. His Major League debut ended up being one of the best Major League debuts in the history of the sport Five perfect innings, 50 pitches, and then rain came, which quashed the rest of his start. The Pirates went on to win 7-2. And then there was that Hayes play. Yadi Molina. And sure, let history note that Yadi Molina is an old, slow catcher. Go nuts with that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. High chopper. And Hayes, in having to burst to his right, can't stop, can't set himself the way you'd like to. You know, planting on that right foot, he has to keep going. So he leaps up into the air and just flings this majestic rainbow across the diamond. And Colin Moran at the other end Waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. At the last second, gives a terrific stretch. Beats out Molina. Molina gets past first base and just kind of has this, you've got to be kidding me. Look on him. And Hayes, it's like nothing, man. It's like nothing. You know why? Because he didn't do it once. Oh, he did it once in this game. He's done it once in the major leagues. But he's been doing this thing. He's been performing at this level defensively all his life. I can tell you that I was witness to an infield practice at PNC Park last week. I made a casual mention of it here on Daily Shot where I told you that I was just generally impressed with how this whole infield has come together defensively. Obviously, Kevin Newman's not your answer at shortstop, but he's error-free all year long. So he's been very good defensively. So keep this in context. And everybody, including Eric Gonzalez, who was rotating in and out of positions, was just making all kinds of terrific plays. Brian Hayes makes some version of that thing you saw in St. Louis happen every other day in these infield practices. When he turned and threw, I can promise you that not a soul on that field wearing a glove and not a soul in that visitor's dugout was surprised by it. Not because, 
you know, we believe in Kibrian or we feel like he can do anything or other hokey stuff. It's because they actually see it happen regularly with their own eyes. That's the difference. That's why Derek Shelton said afterward, nothing that he does surprises me. And that's why Hayes himself sounded like this when he was asked about it afterward. Uh, yeah, just Yachty hit a ball down the line and uh, I was able to get to it and then just kind of kind of instinctively just uh, went ahead and made a throw over there. He's special. I hope that you never hear me excessively using that term. People can get hot. Uh, people can be really, really good. Adam Frazier right now, hot. Richard Rodriguez, hot. Brian Reynolds, really, really good. Hayes, special. Hayes does things that other players can't do, and he does them on a regular basis. That's what special talents do. Hayes was going to be this caliber of a defensive player unconditionally. He's been excelling like this all through the system. Three-time minor league gold glover. The list of three-time minor league gold glovers is limited to Cabrian Hayes, like all time. None of this came by accident. The hitting and the productivity of the hitting has been a welcome development. He'd always hit the ball hard, but for the most part, he'd been putting it on the ground. And you see a lot of those still. You'll see him just mash the ball right at an infielder. And you'll think, oh, man, if only that had found a hole. Well, what he did in working with the Pirates, modifying his swing, launch angle, and everything else, started getting the ball up. So now it goes over infielders' heads. It goes to places where people can't catch it. Sometimes it goes over fences. And what do you know? All of that velocity that he'd been pumping into that bat started to turn into numbers. Maybe special numbers. Because the things that make him an excellent fielder also physically contribute to his hitting. The quick hands, the quick wrists, the reflexes, the poise, the smarts, the expectation that he should be that good. He should be hitting the way he is. He should be making a play like the one that he did yesterday. And like another one that he's going to make right here at Coors Field tonight. Because that's, that's what these types of talents do. <sighs> Can't say it enough, Pittsburgh. Enjoy him. And I don't mean that in a cynical sense. He's going to be here for a long time. There's a lot about baseball that's not enjoyable in general. Enjoy the stars when you have them. He's, he's something. He really is. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question, and that's brought to you always on this program by the good folks back home at the North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park, home to steak on a stone, home to the planet's only fully dedicated Pittsburgh Baseball Club Sports Bar. Front to back, left to right, it's an especially convenient for Pirates fans looking for a place to watch the game like now when the team is on the road. Get together with others who are Cheering for your favorite team and enjoy a terrific eating experience as well. North Shore Tavern on Federal Street across from PNC Park. Today's question comes from 
Chris Reisinger, who asks, what prospects do we have a serious chance of seeing contribute later this year that could be on the team next year? There already seem to be pieces here to like. Yeah, there are, Chris. And, and when I was telling people, writing and doing this show from Bradenton, that there's some terrific talent uh, at hand. And on the way, I'd get all these eye rolls and you love nutting and, and whatever else. And now that we're starting to see some of these individuals for ourselves with our own eyes, uh, including playing for the Pittsburgh team, it makes a little bit of a difference. And now all of a sudden you start looking for the next one. Or you start paying attention to the lower minors where Nick Gonzalez came back from a month-long injury. He's the Pirates' top prospect, for those who don't know. Second baseman, outstanding hitter. First-round pick last summer. He's out for a month, steps into the batter's box, boom, hits a home run. Leo Verpaguero, the shortstop, who's expected to be the shortstop of the future for this team, came in the Starling Marte trade outdid him with two home runs in that same game. That stuff is fun. To answer your question, I'm looking either at players who are really excelling, dominating in double A, or that are just, you know, kind of there and available in Indianapolis. Uh, To the latter count, and I say this with no real excitement, Jared Oliva, he's not a prospect that I've ever thought, wow, this is really going to be a big part of the future. He looks like he could be a fourth or fifth outfielder, maybe, if things go well for him. But he could have been used this year, you know, when the team was trying out outfielders from all over the solar system and still could use some help. The ones that I'm looking forward to have spent the season in Altoona, and that's Ruanzi Contreras, the pitcher who's throwing... 100 miles an hour and a whole lot else. Usually when you hear 100, you're talking about a reliever or someone who's going to become a reliever. But Contreras has a full arsenal. Uh, He brings it, and he brings it with way more pitches than just the four-seamer. He needs to have a stop, at least, in Indianapolis. I believe he's going to have one sooner rather than later. And once he does, that he can get a September call-up to the team, and you'll see him make his debut at that time. O'Neill Cruz falls into the same bracket. The Pirates didn't want to mess with him and move him around the the field, even though he is currently a six foot seven shortstop, and that seems counterintuitive to everything that we know about baseball. He's also beginning getting reps at other positions, uh, notably in the outfield. Why? Because he has one of the best power bats, maybe the best power bat in the system to go with Mason Martin, a teammate of his in Altoona. Those are the ones that I'd be looking forward to more than anyone else. It would be Contreras and Cruz. But then, you know what? I would have said that to you, I don't know, just a couple of days ago, and I wouldn't have thrown out Max Cranick, where Alex Stumpf, our beat writer, who's been high on Cranick for a long time, would have scolded me for leaving out Cranick. And then what's Cranick do? Comes up and has one of the best big league debuts that anyone's ever seen. So keep your eyes open. I, I keep telling people, stop worrying about the record. And I've been saying that all along. Stop worrying about the record. When they win, hope that it's as a result of younger players doing something When they lose, whatever. Worry about the talent. Enjoy the talent. It's here. It's here. Oh, and also, it's coming. I appreciate the question, Chris. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. Again, I'll be covering the game here tonight between the Pirates and Rockies. I say tonight, it's actually a 5.10 p.m. Pittsburgh time first pitch. Uh, Tyler Anderson's taking the mound for the Pirates. We'll have another one of these daily shots of Pirates tomorrow. 
Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.